The It's Just Us Radio Show. Hi, I'm Charlene. I want to welcome you to It's Just Us in the community, and we are talking about growth. I'm sure that's enough said right now for so many of us, and it, it just hits so many strings in our hearts. We're going to talk about the performance, the production that's happening right now at the Horizon Theater. And joining me are the director of Horizon Theater, Lisa Adler. We have Lauren Morris, Jasmine Renee Ellis, Jennifer, Ack Jennifer Acker, and Lauren, I'm sorry, Lorraine Rodriguez Reyes. Am I correct, ladies? <laughs> Please forgive me for my bumbling and any errors that I've made, but thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Lisa, I have to start with you. Okay. <laughs> the timing. Oh my gosh. So tell us what were the determining factors initially in bringing this performance to Atlanta, to Horizon? Just, just take us back to when this all, the conversation started. Well, I read the play in probably 2016 or 2017. And when I read the play, I literally didn't know any of the story. And I was shocked and um, a little embarrassed <laughs> that I didn't know any of the story, uh, but I came to it fresh and I went, oh my gosh, if I, as a really strong feminist, don't really know this story, a whole lot of people mm -hmm. don't. Um, and so, and that, at that time, uh, well, how it works in with theater and new plays. This was a new play commissioned by Oregon Shakespeare. They were commissioning a whole series of plays about American history, and this was one of them. Uh, and it was a co-production with three very large theaters around the country. And how it works is you've kind of got to wait in line for the rights to things. So we knew it was going to be a while before we got the rights. We did get the rights to produce it. We were it was scheduled, it was on the docket for fall 2020 is when oh, it was yeah. so we had gotten the rights we we're supposed to be produced in fall 2020 uh, obviously that didn't happen we looked at maybe doing a virtual version of it we mm. looked at doing it the next year we had done it and doing any of those and mm. then when we finally realized we were going to come back with a 2022 season our, my first um, response was you know i don't know that i want to do something really divisive and really um, polarizing in our first shows back um, from, you know, from the pandemic. But yeah. then Amy Coney Barrett happened. And then it was, and then I have a board member whose name is Lynn Siegel. And she is a former uh, uh, a, a chair of Planned Parenthood. Her husband, Eric Siegel, is a constitutional law expert and wrote a book on the Supreme Court. And he said, well, this decision is going to come down in May or June of 2022 so we said well if that's when the decision's happening then that's when we need to do the play so that's that's how we decided to do it now and here because we had a heads up from eric that he thought the decision was going to come probably mid to late june 2022 and that was back in the fall when he told us that and now eric is speaking next weekend after our matinee oh nice nice you know i i hear you on having a performance right after 2020, 2021, and all that came along with that. But I think just from a personal perspective, I think I was ready to have a converse, to have hard conversations and to get truth, if I can say yeah. that also. So I think the timing again was absolutely on point for um, the piece that that just ended at Horizon. As yeah. well as this piece Black. is coming to, yes, I yeah. really do. Yeah, the light was. Um, I'm so glad we were able to produce that. Uh, yeah, and and actually, the actors were in such a better place to do it. Mm -hmm. Waiting two years, like mm -hmm. something transformed in them over the two year period. It was very interesting to watch. So, I'm glad to have both these. Although we do have some some subscriber people going, "Wow, Horizon's gotten really political this year," and and we mm -hmm. kind of unexpectedly have. But yeah, well, that comes with it also. You know, what can we say? That is, it comes with it also. It comes with it also. So let's talk with Jasmine, Jennifer, and Lorraine. I'd like to start with you, Jasmine. If you could please um, tell us your your role with this um, cast, this wonderful, amazing all-star cast, and how you felt getting the news that you would be a part of this production. 
Um, so I play um, eight different characters. Um, my first two are Aileen and Barbara. Um, and Aileen is a close friend of uh, Norma McCorvey and Barbara is a feminist activist. Um, so you see um, those two characters and several others that I play. Um, when I got the news that I was going to be in row, I was very excited. Um, I, I cried a little bit because of um, just the nature of the show itself hits very home for me. Um, so I was I was very excited to know that I would be a part of telling such a, a impactful story. Um, and I never would have thought never would have thought I'd be doing a show about Roe. I didn't know the story myself. I didn't know the story until I read the script. And so when I read the script, my jaw dropped. I was like, wow, I, I, I didn't know any of these details. I didn't know how it started. I, I didn't know anything. And so now that I know, you know, the grounds of which Roe versus Wade, um, I have a, a much more appreciation for um, those women that were involved. And I think that adds to it, especially as an audience, because I'm hearing you all share that even you may have, you have we've all heard of it, but we didn't know some of the intricate details around the decision and what happened before the decision, so forth and so on. So I think that that's really going to um, be ahas in probably every line that's spoken during this production. And it sounds like you got some ahas in preparing for your roles in this performance as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Jennifer, same question to you. Um, how did you feel and, and which character are you uh, representing? So I'm playing Sarah Weddington, who is uh, the woman who argued and won Roe v. Wade. She was 26 years old. It was her first contested case. Um, just a couple of years out of law school, she, I believe, did the work pro bono because no one would hire her. Um, so an exceptional figure. And um, Lisa said something to me. She says, in my heart, I know it's you um, after the final callback. And um, I felt the same way. I normally when you book a role, you're excited. You're like, yeah, I booked it. I, I can do the work. And this felt so different yeah. from any other role I've booked. It was not a role I booked. It was a calling. I I felt I had to tell this story. I wanted to tell this story with Lisa and Lauren and this cast. Um, and my mom's a college professor of a similar era. She was a, a professor in science and uh, very similar to Sarah Weddington's story, um, kind of a, a path maker for women's voices in a boys club. And um, so I saw Sarah Weddington, I read Sarah Weddington and I understood her. I grew up with her. I witnessed my mother having to be so strong and so steeled and so poised just to have her voice cut through the room. So yeah. um, it almost doesn't feel like I booked a role. <laughs> it feels mm -hmm. like I, it's just a total alignment moment of I have to tell this story right now. And of course with the SCOTUS leak, um, it feels shocking and all the more pressing. And every night my lines mean something new uh -huh. and different because that morning there will be news about the new law in Louisiana or, and all these things are in the script, you know, as if it were predictable. Right, right. <laughs> it's been a really powerful, challenging, painful, beautiful experience so far. How do you think Sarah might feel right now? Mm -hmm. You no. know, it's, it's, <laughs> to your point, this piece is, the play is, is written, is scripted, is casted, but it's, it's still living. It's like it's yeah. still alive and I just feel it so much. What do you think? I, I'm just, just curious. I know you, we don't know what she may think, but what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think the playwright gives us something. Uh, uh, another character asks Sarah Weddington a similar question when she's later in her life and she goes, well, I just terrible. <laughs> if you had told me 21 years ago that I'd still be arguing this case in 1994, I'd have said you were crazy. Yeah. So I, I think she she knew it was a lifelong, even upon her death, she knew it was a lifelong struggle. She knew it was a challenge that preceded her and postdated her. Um, I don't think she'd be surprised. I think she'd be fighting just as hard. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she'd still be on the path. Wow. Thank you for that. Lorraine, um, your character, your thoughts, your feelings. 
<laughs> Hello, thank you for having me, Charlene. Absolutely. Um, I play Connie amongst uh, another character called Ophelia and Thurgood Marshall. Uh, both uh, Connie and Thurgood are very close to my heart. Um, when I received news that I booked, it was kind of exciting because I, um, you know, came to Atlanta, but this is kind of like my theatrical debut in Atlanta. Um, and to do it with such a prevalent play, a story that must be told, a story that's close to my heart. Um, and as if we were in rehearsals, there were moments that you're like, oh my gosh, I remember Gloria Alderman. I used to watch her in the news in the 80s. Like all of a sudden these characters are popping up <laughs> yeah. and, and you forgot that you kind of blocked out certain things. Yeah. Um, and, and so that was very um, emotional. Uh, Connie is, I didn't know Connie's story because you really don't until you start watching the documentaries. You know, she wasn't at the forefront of everything. She's Norma McCorvey's life partner uh, for, for many, many, many years. And there's a lot of codependency in her mm. and um, many challenges that we see with people around us. And as Jasmine said, there's certain things that are very close to my heart that you're like, wow, this is, I, I've seen this person in my family often. Wow. And so there's moments where you can relate to the character that you didn't realize, you know, reading it firsthand, you're like, oh, wow, okay, she's really deep. But as you really start discovering her and her motives and her intentions and what she does, there's that moment of like, oh, I know the martyr. Mm. I know who that is. Mm. Um, and then Thurgood Marshall, even though his lines are very short, it was so exciting to research him again I haven't touched him since I was like in elementary school. Um, so it was nice to, to go back and see all he's done for the civil rights movement and, and for women and just fighting for justice. So those are the two that for me, and Ophelia of course moves the story along <laughs> in our consciousness raising group, but those are the two that I found are very exciting um, to play. Wow, wow, thank you for that. I hear so much passion in your voice, almost to a, um, reverence if i can use that word here i hear that so much in all of you all's voices this is huh and i'm feeling it over here as well lauren um as it pertains to community engagement i want to first ask you uh, as i've asked everyone else um what your role is um as part of being cast and or the creative team for row and my second part of the question and i believe lisa can chime in on this piece is community engagement takeaways how how should we feel? How do you all want us to feel about this right now? And react and respond as well. Well, mm. that's a really interesting question. Um, I'll get to that in a second. I, um, again, thank you for allowing us this forum to talk about our work and this story and these people. I also just want to say, because part of my role is the dramaturg, and that's the person who does all the research mm -hmm. behind all of this. And there's so much because it's, oh, I don't know, the history of the last 50 years of the United States and these people's real lives. Right. Um, Norma McCorvey, that everybody is speaking about, is the woman who was Roe in Roe v. Wade. So Roe was a pseudonym to protect her identity. She was the woman who was seeking an abortion, could not get an abortion because it was illegal. And so she was the plaintiff in that case against Henry Wade, who was the district attorney in Dallas. Um, so she is a very central character to all of this. Um, in terms of my connection to the story, why it's important to do this work and how that relates to community engagement. I, I'm gonna take this a little bit to the macro level for, for a second. I've thought a lot in the last, like many of us have in the last two years about what it means to be a citizen of the world and what is the work I do in the world to help be a responsible citizen, help move us forward. Um, and I, I do consider myself an activist in some ways, um, but, but I think the way that I choose to do that work is by working on plays like this, that I think tell stories that allow 
us as human beings to think about things in new ways that that cultivate empathy in the world and and that to me is the real work of theater it's also the real work of this community engagement work that we're doing so i don't know how i want you to feel exactly what i want you to do is put yourselves in the shoes of the people who lived this story and in the people who will be affected this is this is where it becomes not just a nice night of storytelling at the theater but a bigger mission in the world uh i want people to be able to put themselves in the shoes of the people who will be affected by these rulings mm -hmm. by these laws um in very real ways every single day um so on some level community engagement is about education it's about who are the people in our community who are doing this work on the ground in a very real way? And that is um, an organization that works with reproductive health at health at uh, Emory at the Rollins School of Public Health. There's an organization called RISE um, that is doing very real boots on the ground work with reproductive health in our communities. Um, it's representatives from reproductive justice groups in town. Um, and just bringing in the voices of the people who are actively doing that work every single day mm -hmm. uh, out in the world. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I think that was an important question to ask, but I think it also peeled some layers back <laughs> as well. So thank you for sharing all of that. And as you were talking, it brings me back to you, Lisa, and something that you shared. And just thinking about the title of the play, the performance, and especially right now, mm -hmm. audience may um, come to the theater with, with the, this is going to be about this in our minds. Can you tell us what role is mm -hmm. and what role is not? Sure. Um, it is the story of two women who shaped the history of reproductive rights um it is norma's story and it's sarah's story and it's and they it's actually set up that way at the beginning of the play sarah walks out she says i'm here to tell you my story and norma walks out and says oh yeah well i'm telling you my story <laughs> so the two of them tell very different stories about what brought them to um to together and what happened to them over the 20 years after the Roe v. Wade decision. Um, and they both went on quite a journey. So that is just, and in the context of telling that story, we learn, we, it's what I call edutainment. So mm -hmm. in the context of telling that story, we learn not only their stories, but the story of Roe versus Wade, what exactly was in the, the constitutional, what, how it got argued, what the argument points were, and, um, and how it was won. Um, that is told in the context of the story. We also see the characters from both sides of the debate. We see the pro-life characters and we see the pro-choice characters. And we strive pretty hard to see what drives both these sides to believe what they believe. I will not, I make no bones in saying that the playwright has, a, has, um, has an opinion about what she believes. And I think that's really clear in the play. Um, however, she's also made the attempt to show the passions that inflame both sides that get us in the situation that we're in now where we cannot listen to each other and we cannot, and we take these very polarized points of view. Plays also about who writes history, about who gets, who gets to tell the story, whose story is it, and what is the truth? I mean, in, in all of the world that we have now, that is one of the compelling points in every bit of news, right? Who is telling the truth? And this story, it says, well, whose truth are we telling? Because they're all the truth. It's just who's. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are all pieces of what Roe is about. Um, I think you definitely go on an emotional journey with the play. Uh, it takes you from 1969 to 1992 and then jumps forward to the present. And in the present, you meet a young woman who's actually having to make the decision about having an abortion. 
and helping and walking down the path with her of the things she encounters and the things she has to think about in deciding whether or not to do that. And she asks both Norma, this is a fictional thing that happens at the end of the play. She asks both Norma and Sarah, what should I do? Is it a life? What should I do? And Sarah's answer is, we give you the choice. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is the crux of the play. It's about who gets to choose. Is it the individual or is it the state that gets to choose? And that's really what Robler's is Wait is about. Wow. As um, artistic director of the Horizon Theater, I want to personally applaud you um, and your team there for bringing this to Atlanta. Um, again, the timing of it. I want to go back just a second and thank you for bringing the light as well. And I look forward to what you'll be bringing for the rest of the season. Um, and I'm going to say this right here because I, I, I say it in person, but I never say it to the whole world. Um, the, I love Horizon Theater for a couple of reasons. I, I just love the feel and the, the intimacy of the theater itself. But I absolutely love, love, love that it is in my former elementary school building. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's so fantastic. <laughs> we do run into people uh, pretty often that went to school there, but I did not know you were one of them. Yes, yes. So it's really a kindred for me. And I just love telling that story. So thank you all for letting me share my story. <laughs> just that. that's so great but this has been wonderful i thank you again all of you for your time and i would like for one of um, our cast members if you would to please give us more information how can we attend the performances where the your horizon is located um, and ticket information where can we get tickets either one of you is fine they, they may not know but i will <laughs> <laughs> i can take a gander let's see i've worked at horizon a few times um, correct me on the website, horizontheater.com. Very good. <laughs> yes. Tickets are available there. We're in the heart of Little Five Points. We run shows Wednesday through Sunday with two shows on Saturday. Um, and as you said, Charlene, it's an intimate experience. The lay of the theater is really compelling. It's different from any theater you'll ever sit in. You're right there in the heart of it. It is an experience. And after the last two years, I know we need shared experience more than anything. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you, Jennifer. Well, kudos. <laughs> Anything I missed, Lisa? That's pretty good. We, we see the 172 people and we are doing, uh, as uh, if you go to our website, horizontheater.com, it'll also tell you about these various community conversations we're going to be having, the, the after shows, uh, to be able to take advantage of those. We will be posting those online too for anybody to see as we uh, as we get them. And to know the tickets are available and we are running through June 12th right now so great great well I'm, I'm planning to come to see the show itself but I would love to come to be a part of the community dialogue as well I would love to hear what people have to say thank you all again so much Lisa thank you for bringing us all together for this moment in time in more ways than one and uh, all the best to you for this run I'm so looking forward to seeing the performance thank you so much ladies great thank you thank Have you Charlene what an honor thank you Thanks Absolutely. for having us. Absolutely. Bye-bye.